What's up guys, and welcome to a new build series here on Japan Intuitive. We are custom building and fabricating a shifter cart from scratch. I've wanted to do a project like this for a couple years now, and I've been saving up the money to buy the tools and the parts necessary to do it, so now we can finally get going on building this project. So in this series, I'm going to take through every single part from planning to the completed project. So now I'm going to go through and just run through the planning stages and what's all involved to get building one of these shifter carts from scratch. So building a shifter cart from scratch like this it takes a lot of skills, uh, many of which I will be learning along the process. This whole shifter cart build will be a learning experience, introduction to fabrication for me, because this is my first real like fabricating project with actual bending and actual notching, not like going at it with grinding. And I have an actual plan that I'm going to show you in a second. So I'm making the whole frame out of one and a quarter inch steel tubing and also some three quarter inch steel tubing that I picked up from the Pennsylvania Steel Company. Now you don't want to just use pipe from the Home Depot if you're going to be doing this. You got to actually get tube. And you can't use one of those pipe benders from like Harbor Freight. You need an actual tube bender. So now let's go through the other components of the shifter cart besides the frame. So this includes a seat, which I was able to get used very cheap, but it was damaged, so I had to repair it. So I'll go through that process with you then. Another thing is the brake caliper. The brake caliper is from a Kawasaki Ninja, and I found it on eBay. There was two brakes with the master cylinder, and it was like 40 bucks, something like that. So I gotta take one of them off, because we're only gonna be using one, bleed it, and get ready to go for the project. Now onto designing the frame. It is a Tony Cart 97 um, Extreme frame. Uh, you can find the plans online. I'll also put a link in the description to the AutoCAD file. So I have an AutoCAD file of this frame and I'm transferring dimensions and everything and customizing it to my needs and my size tubing and then moving that over to a software called Bentec Pro, which I'm gonna run you through right now. This is the AutoCAD file of just all the go-kart and what I'm doing here is just dimensioning everything so I can get points and for the apexes for the points um, I'll show you uh, designing it in Bentech which is just um, a software you can get. You don't need this but it definitely helps. Um, you need pick points at um, start and end, you need it at the apexes like this one of a bend um, and then when you display that there you go, you can see that's the tube frame, just like that. And that, that what this software does is it gives you all the dimensions, like if we go into parts, you can bring it up like this, you can see it shows the bend in it. You do need to get these pick points at the, the vertices for these pieces. So to do that, um, going back into AutoCAD, um, you can just extend the two, so this is on a bend. You can extend these two lines like that connect them in the middle, and then that center of that line is the center line of each of these tubes, which is the apex of the bend. So just measure out everything and then get all the points, and then, yeah, that's about it. So once we have it all designed up, then I can take this, bring this, um, all this information into the garage, and we can get this all bent, notched, welded, and get the frame built. So in terms of the tools I'm using, I'm using a Pro Tools 105 HD tube bender and a Pro Tools tube notcher. 
and I'm going to be welding everything up with my Hobart Handler welder. So they're all relatively simple tools, but they do take some practice to master. Alright, what's up guys? So here are some more components that I'm just going to go over um, and how they're going to function in the shifter cart. So first of all, the engine. The engine that we're going to be using is a 140cc Leafon engine. So you may know in my sh uh, stick shift go-kart, I used a 200cc. This is a 140. Um, it's right here. It's a manual clutch. It's got four speeds, four up, so pretty convenient like that. Um, it's about 12 horsepower instead of 16 from the one on my stick shift go-kart, but I wanted to try it out. Guesting I'm using is from a Honda GX like 160, 200, you know, those those kind of gas tanks, but you can get them new for pretty cheap on eBay, about $18, $19, somewhere around there. So that's what we're gonna use to feed into the carburetor. And that, what I'm thinking, is gonna be mounted somewhere around here, just about the engine to make it all compact-ish. As you saw in my stick shift go-kart, um, since it's a vertical instead of horizontal placement, I had a little gravity feed and it was like really tall and um, trying to keep it a little bit more compact this time. But it is a one gallon tank, so we'll get plenty of runtime. <clears throat> Here's a steering wheel. It's just a Brill steering wheel. I think the diameter is 12 and a half inches. Um, I got it used kind of, but the outside is all new and restitched. Um, it's comfortable, it's the suede material, which is what I wanted, and it's the shape of the flat top, which is also what I wanted. And we're getting a clutch lever, which you'll see um, we're getting made to go behind here. So it's gonna be a hand clutch and a hand shifter. Um, and like actual shifter, not like a stick shift, like the other one, and it's not a foot clutch, obviously. So these are just some basic parts that I wanted to go over with you um, for the shifter cart. So let's get into fabricating it up and get all this stuff mounted on and see where we can go from there. So this wraps up part one of the video. In part two, we'll actually start the fabrication, but I wanted to go over the planning and how essential the planning is. You have to have a solid plan. So that's what this video is, just the planning of it, the designing, and it's a step that's often overlooked, so that's why I wanted to include it as part one. And it does take a lot of time. Most of the time of this project will be in planning. So that's why I decided I want to include a video like this. So if you like it, subscribe, and I'll see you at part two next week during the fabrication stage.